So here we are uh, in the studio. We're on Rogue Time right now. Yeah. Yeah. That was through Tigna for the Man. Rose. Paprika After Dark. Paprika <laughs> After Dark. Uh, <laughs> I'm wearing no shirt now. I'm just like. <laughs> He's brought out all the snacks for this one. Everything. Um, <laughs> so what we were. What, what, what we had planned on doing for this uh, this week's episode of Paprika before we decided that, oh, that's right, Fandom Month is happening, so um, we won't be able to do this. We're going to talk about uh, the Marvel and DC comics, since we are all comic book readers here. And one thing I want to talk about is who had the bigger events in Marvel and DC, and which one do you gravitate more to and why? Kind of in, in honor of DC just wrapping up one of its... <sighs> Smaller events, would you call it? Uh, yeah, I was yeah. Go- I was going for controversial, no, oh, okay. <laughs> but smaller in scale. Yeah, yeah it didn't really have any scale. kind of ramifications there on was, the main. Well, there was yeah, there sure. there was a tie-in, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of setup in the Batman run. Yeah, was it wasn't a line it. wide like. Yeah, right. It wasn't line wide. Yeah. Like no other writers had to stop the stories they were telling to tell this shit, which right. happens with Marvel every other Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Heroes <laughs> in Crisis. Just ended. Uh, have you read all the Christmas? I just know? finished it. Yes. That you just finished it. Yeah. yeah? All right, uh, Jermaine. What were your th- overall thoughts on Heroes in Crisis? I, it was it was kind of a weird read for me, like, because you know, going through it, you know, being the murder mystery and everything, and all the stuff that was going on with the timelines and all this, stuff, you didn't know what was going on initially, and then when the like when the story started coming together, you're like, ah. Oh, and I, I really don't know what to make of it. I mean, Tom I, King actually admitted that the scene, one one of the two scenes where you see Lagoon Boy Lagoon died, Boy, that, yeah. that he, said he, he said he he said he admitted that it was poorly written. Yeah. I'm like, oh, don't say that to the to the no, masses, don't, don't Tom. let them. They're oh, just going to tear your water. shit apart. Yeah, blood, that's yeah. Just blood in the water. Don't let them yeah. smell <laughs> weakness. <laughs> you never. You just argue and defend. You. Never. I agree, but don't let them smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was. I finished it up. I wanted to try and reread the whole thing before we recorded today. I didn't get a chance, but I did finish issue nine around about four o'clock this morning when I was at work. It, uh, yeah, it was something all right. It was <laughs> just, something yeah, all right. I, I think it It started out yeah. so promising, man. Yeah. It was like a murder mystery. Who killed these dudes? And Tom King's like, yeah, I want to touch on mental health issues. And you're like, all right, then, cool. That's going to play a part. I don't think anybody expected it was going to it was going to take over 85 to 90 percent of the story, whereas the murder mystery yeah. took a 10 percent back. Because yeah. I think like you see Batman, well, Superman, and Wonder Woman are doing investigation and they just kind of disappear after issue four or five. Yeah. You don't see them again. Literally when I think I was like halfway through the series when you because they were showing all the little confessionals in between. Yeah. And when the main, you know, perpetrators, um confessional came up and I was like he did it <laughs> oh so you, you, you I knew like the right then and there I was like oh, yep it was him okay all right uh what do you think about Brian overall I, th- I, look, I think a lot of the ire that it's drawing is related to Wally West mm-hmm. and I think that overlooks the fact that I think fundamentally its message about mental health fails yeah because really? I th- because I think the end of the book implies that yeah, you made a mistake, but all you need are friends. No, you made a big mistake, and you need therapy and prison. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like, but the, but you need therapy, and that's the yeah. point. Like, but like, the thing about it is, he killed the entire therapy place, <laughs> right? Yeah, but there are more therapy. Pl- <laughs> like, like, I don't know. I just for you can't, superheroes, it, that was the you, therapy. You place. can't just say, "Oh well, I'm Harley Quinn, and I screwed up." Like, yes. You also you need also therapy. need a therapist <laughs> and jail time. Like I just didn't, I just didn't like that that whole. It wasn't like an I'm okay, you're okay moment, but it came right. really close, and I was like, the this doesn't ring. All. This doesn't ring true to me, and, and I, right. it was a rare misfire for Tom King for me. See, yeah. for me, like yeah, reading the seeing the whole thing with Wally West, it like it touched on something that we don't even like we didn't even like notice like these things that these superheroes go through, like. You know, Rebirth, um, the Rebirth special with Wally West come back. Everybody was so happy to see him back, and you know it meant something for the DC universe and all this. But what about Wally? You know, right, right. I and, even, I, and I like that. I, I don't yeah. even like DC comics like that. 
and that brought me damn near yeah. to tears. Yeah. With uh, was it Barry recognizing yeah, yeah. Wally? Yeah, yeah. Finally and remembering him, him and yeah. Man, that was some good ass writing, Jeff. But yeah. then yeah, then but then like yeah, seeing the aftermath of that was like, hey, he had a wife and kids and stuff. He had a family. All you know, everything he had is gone. <laughs> right, right, and I think that's kind of. That and the the losing control of the Speed Force is kind of yeah. what pushed him, yeah, more or less over there the was edge. A, there's a really great issue of Astro City, like one of the best single issue comics in yes. in history that in that dealt with the ramifications of these universe changes changing events, and it was about a just a on the street guy who had a wife that he had dreams and memories of that did not exist anymore wow. because history had realigned and he didn't realize what had happened. Like he was just like, I dream of this woman and I have no idea who she is. Oh wow. And, uh, I the, don't know where to hang- start with that series. And, and the <laughs> hanged man who is the, the spiritual sort of specter character in Astro yeah. city reveals to him what happened in this massive superhero crisis on infinite earth style event that okay. realigned the time stream and just, took her out of it. Do you ever see the event or you just see the ramifications? You see, you, he, he walk him through like the event, but the event, cause that's not what Astro city is ever really about. It's yeah. not about like, si- here's a six issue arc where all the heroes fight. It's always about the outside. What's happening beyond these events and how are they impacting yeah. real people? Oh, okay. So, so, so yes and no, but you only ever see it as a bystander. Okay. Uh, and, and it's, Top one of the top five single issues I've ever read in my life. Ooh. I could say that without thinking about any other comics and not being able to recall anything specifically, but it's it's that good. Uh, so Heroes in Crisis. Oh, is this is Heroes in Crisis a besmirch of the DC Crisis imprint? So we're talking about a Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, Final Crisis, mm-hmm. Identity Crisis. No, I, I think Crisis on I think Earth Final too? Crisis still gets that. Um, I don't know. I, 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 but I don't think I don't think Heroes in Crisis is a real crisis. No, no. You know, it's like it's a it's, different type type of crisis. So, yeah. so like recently, it's a mental crisis, right? In like a, I can't remember whether it was an issue with Superman or something. They 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 went over how many crises the DC universe have actually experienced, and those are the cosmic scale, yeah. uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, zero know, hour. Zero guess, hour yeah. was one of them. Yeah. Um, crisis in time was zero hour. Crisis yeah. in time. Um, the uh, uh, infinite, infinite, crisis. Crisis. infinite crisis. Final crisis was one yeah. of them too. So they didn't give any love to identity crisis, huh? That's not really. It's, it's, it's it kind of falls in the same story. category. Yeah. Yeah. It falls in the same category as Heroes in Crisis in that they both didn't work. <laughs> I actually, I did actually like um, what it did for the villains, though. In, you know, identity crisis that is, that it made them more of a threat and it gave them a reasoning why, like, they have so many silly DC villains out there Mm -hmm. because the Justice League actually wiped their minds and made them that silly and ineffectual. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, So, yeah, it's... People are are shitting all over Heroes in Crisis right now. Oh, of course they are. (laughs) And simultaneously praising Doomsday Clock number number nine, number ten. That was great. That was, oh, I mean, like, there's no question. Like, that That was a great, great story. Oh, man. Oh, man. I haven't read any of Doomsday Clock. This issue of Doomsday Clock is essentially Doomsday Clock's version of the Dr. Manhattan watchmaker story from the original Watchmen. Yeah. In terms of... I, it's 1986 and I am here. It's yeah. 1953 and right. I am here, and it fl- jumps back and forth. It is brilliant. It is maybe the most existential comic DC has ever yes. produced. Yes, it's meta oh. as fuck. It okay. is. It is absolutely meta. Yes. Okay, <laughs> literally, meta, <laughs> literally, metaversal. Yes, even. I've read uh, all of the. Uh, this is what you need to know going into Doomsday Clock tie-in. So a little bit of Superman, a little bit of Justice League, a little bit of Batman Flash, yeah. all that kind of good stuff. So. I've read all up to that, but I haven't actually got into Doomsday Clock. Um, oh boy, it, it's really ramped up the last couple issues. I don't like, know how they're going to land this thing, yeah. but it's been. If it falls apart at the end, I'm going to be very yeah, disappointed. Especially after it's these been, last two or three issues, it's yeah, it's, it's been better than it ever had a right to be. So we only there's only what two left because they're doing twelve, there's right? Two yeah. more issues. Left, Next yeah. issue in August. 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 That's actually kind of soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For this book. Do you guys think, because Watchmen had a whole bunch of delays. In yeah. America, do you guys think that some of these delays might be purposeful? I, I to, wondered about that. To, to kind of recreate that feeling of Watchmen? Cause, well, cause, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, well, not only so much that, but I think it's Gary Frank. 
I, see, he's I, one of those artists that takes it takes him a while to do I've his seen, craft. I've okay. seen Gary Frank put out a monthly book before because yeah. he did he did J. Michael Straczynski's Midnight Nation. Yeah, he did uh, Supergirl and, for a while. Yeah, and, and it was for, it was like clockwork mm-hmm. once yeah. a month. And and so, but but the level of detail and nuance yeah. in this is pr- it's probably taking him twice as long to draw any given issue of this. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I could I could believe it. The art is definitely holding him up. It's definitely yeah. It's definitely dense, like artwork wise. It's I mean it's yeah. it's like Watchmen. Yeah. It's as dense as Watchmen is visually. Okay, so when does Watchmen hit HBO? Any idea? Uh, I, I don't know if they announced yet, yeah. but it's got to be. It's this year because they yeah, keep this year, advertising right. the heck yeah. out of it. Hmm, interesting. That's uh, a guaranteed watch for me. Uh, oh yeah, oh, of course. I gotta because like, no I, one I knows to, what the fuck it is. I have to say that because I say things. I'm gonna watch this, and then I'll watch it three years from now. Glow season two, but <laughs> and then there are. This is a thing I'm watching, and that is definitely gonna be a day one watch for me. Yeah. No okay. question. So you, are you in a week to week that joint? Okay. There's there's no oh, way to yeah. binge that. Yeah, I got no chance of. Binging yeah, I'm, I'm week in a week in that. Uh, I had to I had to week to week Watchmen when I read that in a collected format. Like, I can't sit down and read all this at once. Oh, it's no. way dense. Way was, too yeah. dense. Yeah. I was um I remember I was working at a comic shop at the time and well not even I mean not when um, Watchmen came out but years later and I was like you know what. I'm going to, every time I work, I'm going to pick up some books, you know, get a few things to read. Got uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths. Then I was like, let me jump into this Watchmen, getting all the individual issues. I was literally reading one one at a time. Nobody every... jumps into Watchmen. Watchmen yeah. jumps into yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, holy shit, what is this? Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I couldn't imagine reading, yeah, reading it in one sitting. So that being said, uh, we talked a little bit about Heroes in Crisis, a little bit about Doomsday Clock Watchmen. Uh, that's a lot of DC stuff. It is, yeah. It is, it is. Uh, what about the Marvel side of things? What what kind of big events? Well, do you guys remember loving on the Marvel side? This of things? is, is yeah. an easy question for oh. me because there's only like there's only a handful. Like, there's really yeah. only like three or four that I think are are terrific, like actually terrific stories. Yeah, uh, that were equal parts ambitious and memorable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's it's it's a very small list to pull from. Yes. But. What do you have, Javon? I, um, well, see, and then Marvel really didn't do super big stuff until, like, you know, of course, the 80s with Secret Wars. Right. And I would have to say, yeah, outside of, for my big three with Marvel, it was probably, yeah, both the Secret Wars and uh, Avengers vs. X-Men. Hmm. Because hmm. those were. Okay. Okay. Well, Secret Wars Two is well, weird. Well, not Secret Wars Two. I meant, I, well, I meant, I meant oh, the Hickman. Oh, you I meant the Hickman. The Secret Wars. The Hickman oh, God, and the original. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. Beyonder. In yeah, yeah, a, you yeah. Know, high collar. No, I was thinking the original and then the the, the, the twenty the twenty fifteen wild whatever. and crazy yeah. guy Beyonder <laughs> Jerry Crow Beyonder. That guy's yeah. awful. Uh, what are, what are the uh, the the handful for you, Brian? Uh, all right. So as a reader, like. When Civil War came out, like it ruled oh, the yeah. roost for like oh, yeah. a year, oh, yeah. like because there were delays on that book too. But like literally every single book Marvel was publishing was tying into it, so right, there were right, delays right. across the board as they tried to lay out their schedule. Right. It probably killed a few people <laughs> on the editorial staff <laughs> trying to trying to piece all this together. Oh jeez! But I. I read the main series and every single goddamn tie-in that came out. Good lord! During good that lord. period, God bless you. Good um, luck to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So, and what, I still, I still have all of them, and it's like it was, it was such a fun time to be reading, reading Marvel, and it was so unpredictable. Yeah. When I read Civil War proper now, just the, the miniseries, I'm like, this doesn't really hold up. Be crazy. I'm reading it right now. I'm yeah. on issue four, and I'm still loving it. It's, it's, it speaks to me on a nostalgic level, but I just, I don't know. It doesn't really. I, I find that Miller's Captain America never really rings true for me. Whether it's mm-hmm. Ultimates, whether it's yeah, whether yeah. it's uh, Civil, Civil War, War, it's like I just fundamentally don't think he gets Captain America. Well, but, well I mean, Ultimates is supposed to be a little bit more hard edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. Uh, Paprika regular uh, Vikram is reading the 2015 Secret Wars yeah. and all the tie-ins. He said he found a. Something that's like two hundred and forty some odd issues. And I'm like, what the fuck were you yeah. reading? They, well, there were, there, there were there were quite a, a lot few. of tie-ins. They actually had a map with the whole. Well, I, I was I whole was whole really stuff. selective yeah, about sure. the tie-ins. Yeah. Uh, right I didn't think about like all the battle world or that yeah. the, that civil war or that armor wars or that yeah. Thor's yeah and all that kind of or the uh, old man Logan what was the, the, the old man uh, Logan what was the Peter Parker to Spider Man joint uh, renew our vows. 
the renewal of vows. It might be that. Now I think about because they yeah. didn't put that into the. There was, they um, did a lot of uh, yeah. Yeah, there were there were some okay. Ghost Riders. I, I thought it was a good. Them. I thought it was good as a concept. That Ghost Riders was fucking incredible (laughs) because it it was like Death Race with every fucking Ghost Rider that's ever existed. (laughs) Sold. I actually liked the Civil War um, series that spun out of that. It was cool. Yeah, where it just kept going on for like years, decades. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that was pretty. That was pretty sharp. I did like that. (laughs) What other major X Men ninety two was another one that came out. Oh yeah, I watched. I read all the X Men ninety two. It was a fun. That was a fun style. But but so 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 also I think Thor's is the only one that actually still played in. That actually, because it was they were investigating. The unworthy yeah. Thor ends up kind of going after the uh, the the ultimate Thor's hammer. Yeah, I think I think Secret Wars was a, a great like the current the newest Secret Wars was awesome. But for me, the best event Marvel ever did. I think it's their most ambitious event ever. I think it was just like mind blowing when it happened, and I do think it still largely holds up, which is Venomers. more than I can say. <laughs> more than I can say. It's this it's the clone saga. Um more than I can say <laughs> about virtually anything that came out in the nineties, but that was the Age of Apocalypse. Oh uh, yeah. Age yeah. of Apocalypse is to me one of the be all end all events. And really when I'm looking at like Marvel versus DC, I think DC has had more better events mm-hmm. than Marvel. Marvel's had a lot of events that just petered out or sputtered to the finish line. Yeah. Uh, but DC's ha- DC has the bulk, but I'm hard pressed to find a book in DC's lexicon that is as ambitious and effective as Age of Apocalypse was. I think, yeah, I think Marvel has been more willing to take chances with some of these um, events. And it feels like, at least if not for like, you know, short term, they, um, they seem to affect the characters more. Like after you know mm-hmm. coming out of these events, the the change that some of these mm-hmm. characters go through it seems always, more lasting than, than controls, some of the stuff that happened in DC. It controls the line for a good year, a year and a half, yeah. at least. Yeah, and then a year and a half is about the time for the next big event. And yeah. now it's gotten even. I think the like, window's even tightened on that now because they I, had a run. Yeah, because they had a run. Something's got to be going on all the time with these fuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They had a run where it seemed like it jumped from like fear itself to like original sin and then like access and some other stuff like within months of each other. Right? Yeah, I know uh, original sin and access are right, yeah. right. and I think infinity not too long before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, infinity. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a pretty small scale thing though. Yeah, I think they just a did small it. scale about infinity. <laughs> well, I mean, it w- in that it was really confined to the Avengers books. No, oh, okay. Like, I mean, it was a it was a big scale thing, and I mean, it involved the uh, it resulted Star in the Empire. Well, I was going to say the uh, the Terrigen Miss Bomb, which oh, yeah. which yeah. did have wide reaching effects and oh, brought that, us Miss Marvel. That gave us uh, Inhumanity, the yeah. uh, the book that nobody read. Right. <laughs> <laughs> kicked, all, kicked all the X-Men off to the they side. Were, <laughs> Marvel yeah, was really trying hard to make the Inhumans a thing. They tried. Oh, I'll, I'll, give them, I'll give them props for them trying to make Inhumans a they thing. They put the it machine behind it. Good Lord. It did not It did not work at all. Well, because <laughs> they, they had the, the, the movie that eventually turned into a show yeah. that turned into nothing <laughs> uh, that they were trying to push. Ugh, it, was, it was not good. Oh, oh, why, all right, so you're going to put Medusa in the show – and you're gonna give her a haircut in episode two. Terrible. That, that's what the budget that, that allowed. Was, but yeah. Right? That's what the budget. <laughs> oh my god! Did you guys watch the episode where like Karnak was like with drug dealers in Hawaii? Nope. Uh, no, I didn't make it that far. Nope. I was like, <laughs> the the hell with this. I literally <laughs> I'm so done with it. I literally like because there was one point where I was like I was trying to give it a chance, and you know because when they got to that part with that first part with Karnak where he was like breaking down this fight with all these guys, right. that was amazing. You want to give it a yeah, chance because like, of that? Like, that's kind of okay, cool. All right, but then Karnak. I was like, yeah, once they got to Hawaii and all that, so I was like, oh man, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's a wrap. I can't do this anymore. Screwed the lockjaw on that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I refuse Oof. to watch any any parts of that. Whatsoever. Anson Mount also like. Sucked. He re- he rebounded. And he's so good he on rebounded. Discovery. Yeah. So fucking good. Um, <laughs> so when it comes down to it, do you think DC has the better event stories? Because don't forget about Convergence. Oh. That was a thing. I mean, Convergence, terrible. Uh, um, they, they've just been, like, I can't say, like, they, Infinite Crisis was a mess, and Crisis on Infinite Earths is a mess. But here's well, the thing. DC stories, like we were talking, Marvel's, yeah. Marvel's is always about the next big thing and moving yeah. on to the next stage of the Marvel Universe. DC's events are usually only about one thing. Guys, this is too complicated. Let's reset. Yeah, they're all and about cleaning like, up their messes, basically. always yeah. about that. So, like, you end up with these event books that are really needlessly complex and 
like hard to navigate and, and like Infinite Crisis doesn't make a lot of sense when you're just sitting there <laughs> reading it. Mm -hmm. um, Final Crisis yeah. is like Grant Morrison on Overdrive. Oh yeah, but, which is always Grant yeah. Morrison. Yeah, but um, it's like he had like one too many seances in his That's, basement that yeah. week. Yeah, yeah there's some of those moments in you know Grant. Morrison's um, catalog where I'm just like, what the fuck was he doing like, here? Like, I cannot what follow happen? you, Grant. <laughs> yeah, and Final Crisis was definitely one of them. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then again, you also have things like Kingdom Come, which is which was was, was the book for yeah. the longest. Yeah. Uh, but I see, like, I look at the Kingdom, Alex Ross. Kingdom Come and Marvels. Well, Marvels came first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so, like, first. Marvels was, like, a, a celebration of all things Marvel Universe, and then right. Kingdom Come came along, and it's like a celebration, sort of, of all the the best that DC has in contrast with all the worst tendencies of the 90s. Yeah. Right. Right? And, and I think they both work really great for different reasons. I do have a favorite DC event. What is your favorite DC event? Easily. Is it, uh, is it uh, Justice? No. Okay. My favorite DC event, and I think it's leaps and bounds, because it's one of the few event books that I think you can read from beginning to end and feel totally satisfied. Are we talking about within the DC universe, not like Watchmen? No, or, no, no. This okay. is a thing that happened, and it had it, it, it reached out. It was kind of insular in terms of being sort of mostly confined to one line of books, but it was absolutely a thing that had long-reaching effects uh, in, the, in the DC universe. Can you guess what it is? Blackest Night. You're very close. Blackest oh, Night was dope. Brightest Day, then. No, it's, oh, well, then, it's then. the Sinestro Corps War. It's the thing oh, that kicked that yeah, whole thing off. Yeah. Okay. Sinestro Corps War is from beginning to end as perfect an event book as you're ever going to get. Okay. I, it's, yeah. it's so Wait. fucking good. And I, it delivers on everything yeah, you want to see. I remember, I recall reading that last issue, and yeah, I was like, man, this is so awesome. The lead up, the lead up to it, there's a yeah. scene in, in, in just a random scene. In, before the events even started, where a yellow ring comes to Batman. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? And it's like, you have the ability to instill great fear. Welcome to the Sinestro Corps. Yeah. And he pries it off and chucks it away. Okay. And he's like, what in the hell was that? And then the ring goes to Crane after that. I uh, uh, I just, when it comes to superhero comics, I I like my stories very earthbound. I've never been a big fan of of anything in the magical realm, so I don't really fuck too much with Doctor Strange or or magic, yeah. Uh, of the new mutants that'll never come out, uh, or or space. Like I, I'm not a. Uh, there's other people within Pop Rigga that are very much uh, Nova, Guardians of the Galaxy, Green Lantern. I let them deal with that. I I, I take care of everything that's, that's Earthbound. So I never never read Sinestro Corps War. Jeff Johns is. Jeff Johns whole is whole Green Lantern run. Was, oh yeah, was Superb. maybe my favorite Jeff Johns thing ever. Really better uh, than that, the Justice League, right? I would say I would say it's it's Justice Society and Green Lantern, the two best things he's yeah. ever done. Uh, okay. But but that's the Sinestro Core War just rock solid from beginning. I to even toward like the end of that issue where they ha basically had the trailer for for Blackest Night. Uh -huh. and that, I was like, holy shit, I'm ready. At the very end of the book, I think is when Anna yeah. Monitor is revealed. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I am so ready. Like, what, yeah. uh, what's your favorite DC joint? Oh boy, that's a tough one there. And I liked, I liked Crisis and Infinite Earths back in the day, but I was, I just, this one just came to mind. Um, I was thinking of the story from the mid '90s that they had done, uh, the Final Night. Final Night, yeah, Final yeah, night. yeah. That's because that's where uh, that was Hal Jordan, Jordan's his last, redemption story, yeah. basically. Yeah. Oh, that's where he's he's he's, he's, he's still parallax or whatever. The parallax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he like he like one of his quote unquote last deeds was you know reignite helping to reignite the sun, you know all right. after all these because the, after what was it, zero hour where he was you know he's been this villain for so mm -hmm. long he's finally come out of I guess come out of that you know villain that villain mode and it's like you know what I need to do something good with myself or and uses basically the last of his energies to help reignite the sun but. It was actually great seeing, you know, what was happening with all these heroes um, during this time when, the, you know, the sun had went out or the sun eater was destroying the sun. Like, of course, Superman being a solar based hero, he's losing his powers. And, I'm right. fucked, guys. I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you figure it out. You finally beat me. <laughs> you see hero like Lex Luthor even offered to jump in and, you know, he was helping people out like right. it was because it affected everyone. And um, like. I think it even got to a point. They actually had a cool moment in there where Etrigan the Demon was offering to help, and um, like he, of course, there was some big price he had had on it, like course. everybody's souls or something like that. And 
Like it, literally, their answer came in the um, in the Daily Planet headline. It said, uh, "Etching go to hell." Or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't? Wh- when is somebody going to write a series where Etrigan? Uh, takes part in like rap rap battles. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> well, what about over at Marvel? So you say Marvel or uh, Civil War is your favorite Marvel? No, or, Age, Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse, my favorite from Marvel. Sinestro Corps, my favorite. From DC. And what was your favorite Marvel? Marvel, uh, I think. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna have to say Avengers versus X Men. AVX, huh? AVX. Okay. I there was something about that story that just moved me. Um, Seeing this big ass, like it was what we wanted to see in, like, say, an end game for like the longest time, like right. you know, the biggest, biggest battle you can ever see. And you know, you at the time you really didn't see anything from Marvel on that scale, right? Right, 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 right. And seeing where it left, like, because they relaunched the pretty much relaunched the entire Marvel universe off of the act. Yeah, you get uncanny <laughs> Avengers, they haven't yeah. stopped relaunching yeah. the X Men line since then. <laughs> I, I like that because Bendis jumped over X Men after yeah, that, and I love that run. I did, all yeah. new and then the uncanny, yeah. yeah. Uncanny, Cyclops all has been X Men was all new X Men was yeah. a very interesting premise, yeah. but like I a had lot fun of stuff. With that. Uncanny was awesome, like, just because. Cyclops was not the greatest of characters up until AV, post AVX. Hmm. I, I think he terrorist. became more he, interesting later on. Cyclops yeah. has had a very up and down history. My yeah. favorite Cyclops moment is probably when he left Madeline Pryor abruptly as soon as he found out Jean Grey was in that capsule at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> he had a wife go. and a child, a wife who looked just like Jean Grey. Yes. yes. He's got a type. He was a dirt what bag. What a man. dick. He was a dirt bag. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then you look at Cable and it's like, I get it. Yeah. I see why you ended up like this. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's but true. yeah, they were, yeah, Marvel was like really um, flowing after that with the creative juices and everything. Like some of these books that were, yeah, spitting out of um, AVX. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Uncanny, Uncanny Avengers, Avengers was, was um, pretty cool. The, the final page of that first issue of Uncanny Avengers with the Red Skull holding Charles Xavier's yes. brain in his hand. Yeah. yeah. I was like. Well, oh boy, this, like, <laughs> buckle up, guys. <laughs> that, um, we got because we got, we got Hickman's Avengers stuff. The new Avengers mm-hmm. run was like, the, the, the Illuminati. Is, to yeah. me, the greatest run of a superhero comic. Yes, is the Hickman Avengers yeah, it's, run. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Well, we have had our thoughts on Marvel versus DC. What is your favorite DC? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you Marvel, said. DC, yeah. Uh, my favorite Marvel is going to be. It was Civil War for the longest, yeah. but uh, it's 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 Secret Wars. And okay. everything that leads up that. into yeah, Secret it's, Wars. It's awesome. I Secret plan on rereading it again later on this year. Uh, I, If you were listening to this and you don't really read comics, well, why, why are you still 27 minutes into this show? <laughs> uh, or if, you, if you're not a big fan of superhero books, that's that's what I suggest you check out. Is the, is the Hickman New Avengers Avengers run and everything that leads into Secret Wars. Uh, DC-wise, <sighs> events? I mean, I'm not really a DC dude. Like, DC just doesn't. That doesn't do it for me. Uh, I really love the fuck out of some Kingdom Come, though. Uh, not only is it beautiful, but just the return of Billy Batson. Oh, I have to have him forgot who he was for some, like, 30 years. Yeah. And he was trying to figure out, shoo, sha, sha, ah, shazam. Yeah. And then, yeah, just Superman on his way to, to go save whatever, and that bolt of light and just strikes him oh, out of the yeah. ground. He's standing over him in that pose. Uh, the big red cheese. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, so no, yeah, no, no big events for me, but it, but my favorite DC story, as far as the the DC universe is involved, is Kingdom Come. My favorite DC story is probably Long Halloween. That's a different story. So fun, uh, fun, fun fact about the, the Kingdom Come. The the first time you see Batman's robots patrolling Gotham City, mm-hmm. there's a gang that they're chasing. Yep. it's the Cosby Kids. What? Wait, oh, what? wow. If you look back at it, it's definitely the Cosby Kids. I got to go back and read that now. <laughs> 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 I, never, I never looked at it. I'm like, all right, there's just some it. random, check random it. You look at it there. now, you're going to be like, oh, oh that when he's kids. like feeding them orders from the Batcave or whatever. It, yeah, yeah. When he's just in the Batcave and like yeah, all Superman's those bo- there, robots are like patrolling. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, then. That would have that would have been awesome five years ago. But. I said, <laughs> now it's like now it's like oh geez. hashtag me too. <laughs> I I said for the longest that uh, what DC should have done is work their way up to uh, Batman versus Superman or work their way up to the Dark Knight Returns being their Civil War, mm. right? Uh, and then once that kind of that dust has settled, when all the actors are like, look, I got one more left in me. 
they should have ended with Kingdom Come. Hmm. And that would have been a great way to end the, the DC Extended Universe. But we didn't get that because uh, it's DC. Uh, so that's going to do it for this little mini episode here. Uh, talking about some comic books. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, go ahead and retweet it out, man. Let people know all your comic book reading friends. If you don't read comics, uh, it's just yet another another form of storytelling that people I don't think take seriously. I think people really still think comics as uh, Superman and Batman with the, you know the pants on the out or the trunks yeah. on the outside of there. It's that stigma, like it's like kids' funny books. Kids but funny they'll books, read but Harry Potter. But books. They'll read Harry oh, Potter books. Yeah, <laughs> uh, superhero comics only. Uh, are something like ten percent of all comic books. Yeah, uh, strangely enough, but there's something in there. There's still great stories. Great, they are this this generation's Greek gods and goddesses, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so check that modern out. Modern myth. They, they are the is. modern myth. Yeah. So go ahead and check out some comic books. Don't be get off your your fucking high horse. And that'll do, <laughs> that'll do it for this. You guys take it easy. <laughs>